Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are learning the fundamentals of testing in very, very detailed way. Uh, we are in chapter two talking about the software development lifecycle and uh, covering the next topic, which is continuation of 2.4 types of testing. And this tutorial will be talking about the difference between the functional and the non-functional testing. In the derivation of the previous discussion, we'll be talking about each of the seven segment and uh, trying to elaborate more about each one of these concepts and understand how well that can fit into our day-to-day -day interaction of testing. So the very first thing today to talk about is the comparison and differentiation between the functional and the non-functional testing. When it comes to the functional testing, uh, we need to understand what is functionality all about. When we say functionality, of course, functionality of any application is the core feature of a system or an application. That means without this, this application is not at all a system at all. For an example, if I'm talking about a, you know, kind of a wallet, kind of digital wallet payment option, the core functionality of this application is to transfer money between one account to another account. That means at any point of time, when you make uh, payments for your phone bills, or if you're trying to you know, transfer some money to your friends, or you're just scanning a QR code and trying to make a payment for your shopping or uh, whatever you have uh, looked forward to, uh, the core functionality is all about moving items from one particular bank account to another account and testing all about it is called as functional testing. That means these are the core fundamental features of a product and testing them with the functional levels like unit testing, integration testing, system testing is to make sure that the basic function of the application is working fine. Even if I talk about any other application, for example, if I have an application to book flights, then the passengers must be able to search, select and make the payment and book a flight. If I'm not able to do that minimum function, what the application provides to the user, this is where we have failure. The core functionality without which this cannot be called as an application which you're trying to release. Of course, depending on the type of application, depending on the type of functionality it hosts, we can have different functionalities for different products. But these are just two different examples to talk about that, hey, this is what can be called as the core functionalities. On the other hand, when we talk about the non-functional features of an application, it is more about how these core functional features should behave on top of it. Of course, one person can make use of an application in order to make the payment or book a flight. But point here is that how many people can do that simultaneously? If I'm talking about 5,000 users, when they want to do the payment at the same time using the same application, will the product be stable or will it crash? Or even if it is not crashing, does that mean the response time is going to hike up and slow down your interaction with the system? Now that's what we talk about is called as performance testing. Now without performance also, one person can happily work on the application and do the intended task using the functionality. But in order to make it enhanced, in order to add more value to the core functionality, if you top it up with more quality characteristics is what you call it as non-functional parameters. And given that we're talking about non-functional parameters, it's just not limited to performance testing. There are many other things including security testing, usability, maintainability, reliability, portability, localization, whatnot. And most of them talk from a perspective of enablement on top of the core functionality, which simply means that, hey, without these quality characteristics, I can still use the system. But when it comes to certain statements like, is the performance good if 10,000 people work on it? Okay, that's performance. Is my data secured when I'm using your product? Like my username, password, or maybe bank account details, which you're trying to secure, or your credit card details, if they accept or save it, is it secured? Is what we take care of by the security testing. Similarly, if I'm talking about if the product is user friendly to everyone, that is usability testing, right? If I can move this product from one platform to another platform in future, that's portability testing. So, similarly, there are hundreds of 
such levels which we can talk about and they're all add-on which pretty much adds additional values uh, to the core functional features and we are interested to make sure that we test it. Now the additional information which I would like to share with you here is that not every single application comes with all the non-functional characteristics. So we need to identify non-functional non characteristics are difficult to be performed and at the same time it is not uh, so cheap enough to be performed on an application. Sometimes it costs you a lot and uh, it, it takes more time to be performed. But does that mean uh, we don't do it? No, of course we do it. But point is, we always determine the scope right in the beginning that, hey, the team wants you to perform even some non-functional testings and that has to be clearly identified. At this point, a testing team who is responsible for testing the non-functionalities should get involved much earlier in the non-functional requirement discussions right there and ask questions to the business that what are the clarity on several non-functional characteristics. So the testing is not always limited to functionality. If you have non-functional testing in scope of your project, then the non-functional team is responsible to participate right beginning of the SDLC and start reviewing the requirements, start reviewing the architecture, because you must be surprised to know that a lot of functional non-functional characteristics heavily rely on the architecture. So a lot of non-functional team members will start coordinating with the architects when they start building the design for the product. It's as simple as that, right? When you talk about uh, building a house, which you want to build for five stories or five floors, but you don't have the budget of five floors today, right? You only have the budget of one floor to build it. But does that mean the design can be redesigned? No, the foundation, the number of pillars will be built today, no matter you build only one floor, but you have plans to build five floors there. So it is all done initially. So we don't wait for uh, kind of, you know, a later point of time to re-modify re all the design, et cetera. We pretty much uh, get involved much earlier and uh, we may perform the dynamic testing at a later point of time, but initial discussions will help the designers and architects understand that what exactly is the need of the project. So a lot of things to explore here, but of course we have limited time to understand everything. But at this point of time, this would be enough to understand that functional testing is what a system should do and non-functional testing is how this functionality should happen, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.